Who do you consider as your primary care doctor? For many women, a gynecologist often becomes their primary doctor, especially when we're younger, having babies or needing contraception, and generally in good health. But as we age and our health needs evolve, it might be time to reconsider which practitioner or practitioners can best meet our health care needs. Hi, I'm Dr. Mitzi Crockover, and welcome to Beyond the Paper Gown. Today, we'll dive deep into understanding who the different women's health providers are, their training, and tips on how to choose the right one for you. We're also talking about the burgeoning number of virtual health platforms focused on women and how you can evaluate them for your specific health care needs. So let's start with the basics. Who exactly are these providers? The ones we'll talk about today are OBGYNs, internist, family practitioners, and women's health nurse practitioners. And yes, while physician assistants are also on the front lines, they usually practice under a physician's oversight. So all United States doctors, irrespective of their specialty, undergo rigorous training. This includes pre-med courses during undergrad, three to four years of medical school, and a residency specific to their specialty. They can pursue board certification post-residency, signaling that they've met patient care quality standards. Let's take a closer look at the specialties. As you know, OBGYNs are the doctors focusing on pregnancy, childbirth, postpartum care, and overall female reproductive health. They also provide menopause counseling and symptom treatment, as well as preventive health screenings, and they're trained in surgical procedures relevant to the field. Internists prevent, diagnose, and treat adult diseases, from the common cold to chronic conditions like diabetes. While they do have training in women's health issues, in general, their training in areas like reproductive health may not be as extensive as an OBGYN's, and they don't perform surgical procedures. However, increasingly, some internists are obtaining more in-depth training in women's health and may be able to offer one-stop shopping, if you will, for basic GYN and menopause counseling in addition to their usual primary care services. Think of family physicians as the all-rounders. Their three-year training covers everything from pediatrics to psychiatry. They treat all ages and can perform minor surgical procedures. Then there's the Women's Health Nurse Practitioner, or WHNP. They're considered mid-level practitioners, as are the physician assistants. WHNPs are RNs, or registered nurses, with specialized advanced training focusing solely on women's health care needs. Their educational journey includes a four-year nursing program to achieve a Bachelor of Science in Nursing, followed by a licensing exam, and then a graduate degree in women's health. And depending on where you live, their autonomy and practice can vary, so you may see some running their own clinics independently, while others may need a collaborative agreement with or supervision from a physician, depending on state requirements. Okay, now that we've covered the basics, the real question is, how do you decide who to see? Well, you could consult two physicians for specific services if you want to have more specialized care. For example... You can see a gynecologist for specific reproductive health concerns and an internist or family doctor for more generalized or chronic medical issues. Especially once you're over 40, an annual checkup with an internist or family doctor can be beneficial to identify risk factors for chronic diseases as well as treatment. However, if you're aiming for a one-stop solution, you might want to stick with a gynecologist you trust. Just be mindful that while they're perfect for specialized GYN care, they might not be available if you need immediate attention for general ailments or may not feel comfortable treating chronic or multiple conditions. Alternatively, you may find an internist or family practitioner that meets your gynecologic needs as well and work with them as your primary care physician. All of these physicians can provide screening services for preventive care and refer to a specialist if you need further evaluation or treatment. Not all physicians in each specialty are alike, so when you consult one, it's a good idea to ask them how comfortable they are in providing certain services. As I said before, 
some family physicians and internists may focus on women's health and do more gynecology than their peers, and some GYNs feel comfortable taking care of basic health care needs outside of gynecology, such as preventive screening tests and treatment of mild chronic disease. Okay, it's decision time. So here are some other tips to consider when selecting your provider. First of all, get recommendations from those folks you trust, family, friends, even other healthcare providers. Then check if the provider accepts your insurance, or if you don't have insurance, what the fees and costs could be. Then look into their education and board certification status. And next, consider practicalities. For example, is the location convenient to your home or work? Do the office hours work with your schedule? Does the physician have coverage from other physicians when that physician is not available or after hours coverage? Which hospital or hospitals is the provider affiliated with? With respect to reviews, you can look at websites like HealthGrades and RateMDs, but always do take them with a grain of salt. And finally, trust your gut. After your first visit, reflect. Were you comfortable? Were your concerns addressed? And remember, it's okay to find another physician if something just doesn't feel right. And before we end, a word about telehealth, or actually a few words about telehealth and women's healthcare platforms. The pandemic accelerated our use and comfort with virtual health care, and now a plethora of platforms addressing women's health issues have arisen, focused on general health as well as specific issues, including sexual health, menopause, autoimmune diseases, fertility, and pregnancy. And there are even some hybrid models which combine technology and virtual health care with in-office exams. The advantages of telehealth are many, including convenience, accessibility, and time flexibility. And some of the options may provide care at a lower cost than traditional care. But on the flip side, there are no physical exams for the pure telehealth visit, and that reduces the ability to adequately diagnose certain problems. And tech issues can interrupt sessions, and data may be vulnerable, so make sure you know the site's privacy policy. So what do you need to know to make sure you're getting the best care and experience? Well, first, ensure that they have certified professionals on board. If you want to go deeper, find out how they select their providers and what qualifications they require. Also, ask if you'll be speaking with a physician or other healthcare professional, such as a nurse or health coach, and what their background, training, and specialties are. Reviews, again, can give you insight into what other women are saying about their experiences, But once more, take all reviews in context and look for any patterns. And in this day and age, privacy is key. Ensure that your sensitive information remains private. Ask what their policies are, including how they protect your data. Are they HIPAA compliant, which means that they meet the standard of privacy required by the government? And then take a look at what services the platform provides. For example, is it true medical care or is it more counseling or health education? And if it says primary care, is that mainly primary GYN care? Or are they also going to address your high blood pressure and diabetes as well as preventive screening? What is their scope of services? Do they treat mainly acute problems like UTI? Or do they provide specialized care for certain diseases? What ages are most of their patients? And do they provide referrals when necessary and to whom? Will they communicate with your other doctors? Do they provide on-call services for acute issues? At the end of the day, does the platform cater to your specific needs? And it's also important, of course, to understand what the costs are. Does your insurance or employer cover the platform services? Check out any out-of-pocket expenses as well. Some sites require a monthly subscription on top of fees for service. If so, find out what kinds of services and benefits the subscription covers. And finally, is it easy for you to navigate the platform? You know, virtual health companies can be very beneficial to supplement your healthcare or provide specific healthcare services. However, there are many types, and I do urge you to do your homework before committing to one. The bottom line, your health is paramount, so choose a provider who resonates with your needs and prioritizes your well-being. I do hope this information was helpful, and I'd love to hear your comments, so please share them with us on our social media post or on our website at beyondthepapergown.com. 
And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter so you can stay up to date on our podcast articles and news. Thanks, as always, for listening, and take good care. Our podcast was produced by Patrick Shambayati and me, and our associate producer is Kyla McMillian.